aviation is more than just business jets and airline trips. Since the Wright Brothers' first flights, flying has been about exploring and having fun. Come with me in my 1955 Piper Tri-Pacer as I explore the recreational side of aviation. Chasing amazing sunsets, cool airplanes, the perfect omelet burger, and enjoying a cold beer by a fire, camping with other pilots and friends. Now, let's go flying. Last weekend saw beautiful, if a bit chilly weather to head up to New Hampshire for a visit with Instagram's Fly of the Northeast, Ed Gormley, and take a quick tour of the air park he lives at in Brookline, New Hampshire. Of course, I forgot to turn the camera on for takeoff. The parting damper to the north or northeast always affords a view of the picturesque Candlewood Lake and surrounding towns. North Central Connecticut has lots of farmland and a few nice private grass strips as well. Shortly after passing the Neepog Reservoir, I flew right over Bradley's Class C airspace with a nice view of the terminal and runways and saw some planes taking off and landing. After passing by Bradley, you get a nice view of Six Flags over New England, the Connecticut River, Springfield, Massachusetts, and then Westover Air Force Base in Chicopee, Mass, and its fleet of Air Force Reserve C-5s. A bit northeast of the Air Force Base is the Coopin Reservoir, which provides Boston's drinking water. Interesting bit of history in the making of this reservoir, as there used to be five towns in the valleys there until they moved them out and the river was dammed up. It's worth looking up and reading about. Getting north of the Quabbin, I started to see some snow cover, eventually passing by Gardner Airport in Mass, which I used to hit while working on my private pilot training out of nearby Worcester Regional in the late 90s. Brookline is a relatively small strip tucked into the woods of southwest New Hampshire. It took me a bit to find it, with a few false positives as some farms looked like airstrips from a couple miles out. Finally found it and joined a left downwind for only one night. Some rather tall trees at the south end of the field essentially turned it into a one-way strip landing to the south and departing to the north. There was a new housing development north of the runway that they liked people to avoid direct flight over in order to be good neighbors. Once parked, Ed met me for a quick tour of the airport and air park homes, as well as getting a good look at his beast of a stole modified Cherokee 6. With the Robertson stole cuff, belly flaps, drooping ailerons, and plenty of horsepower, it performs quite well, especially considering it's a six seat family hauler. Once again, forgetting the cameras for takeoff, I left after a short visit and headed back to Danbury, as nearby Midfield Cafe at Nashua Airport had already closed for the day. With winds out of the north, Danbury was using runway 35. Always a favorite for me, as I love the approach through the valley. It can get a bit bumpy with the winds coming through the cut, but it's just kind of cool coming down through there like it's a corridor. forward to some more nice weather in the future and sharing some more flights with you. Thanks for watching. Please click subscribe if you like my content.